watch that back corner because it was uh we need to get that other clamp on i yeah just keep an eye on it i'm gonna go this way so that it doesn't do that did it slide out over there This thing's gonna break. But we're definitely not gonna get the shell on today. suit. Alright, now it's time to paint. What's going on everybody? We are back with episode two of our motorcycle hauler build and we have the frame all finished up. It's painted and looking amazing and we are going to be starting on getting the subfloor down. So we already have our Kusa board laid out on here and we need to do a few cuts. We need to cut out the wheel wells as well as get the curves cut and if you guys haven't seen this stuff, we've showed it a little bit on the channel. It is amazing. It is a marine composite board, which means that it is not made of plywood. So it will basically be impervious to water, and we all know that Airstreams leak. So it's a great investment. It is very expensive. It's about five to six times as much as plywood, but I think it's worth it. So we use it on a lot of projects. But we're going to get rocking and rolling on this and I think that you're gonna find our process pretty cool. So now we're going to bolt the floor down and we actually do that before we fiberglass and epoxy it because we want it to be uh, one whole complete unit that's attached whenever we do all of that. So we're going to get it bolted down and then we're going to be doing the fiberglassing and the epoxy.
have nifty things for the epoxy. But they're too slow. Now we are epoxying the top of this thing. Uh, rather, epoxying and fiberglassing the top of this thing. And the reason is, since this Kusa is a foam board, it doesn't always hold screws that great. They tend to pull out of it. So we have found that this is a good solution for that problem is if we add a layer of fiberglass and epoxy it, it helps the screws hold better whenever we're installing all the furniture and stuff like that. So we um, have tried it a few different ways and we find that laying it all out and stapling it down and then epoxying over the top of it is the best way and the easiest and quickest. But you just gotta be sure not to pull too hard because it will pull out of the staple. Okay. Have to keep lined up over here. I just don't know if pulling on it is necessarily like pulling on it that much because you're pulling yeah. too much, I think. I think so. Yeah, because it's just pulling off the staples. Maybe, I mean, we just gotta put a little bit of tension in it. Yeah. I think a little will be enough. Cushion. It's not farting anymore. There we have Lauren doing really important work over there. <laughs> yep. Yes, Lauren actually works very hard. <laughs> it may not look like it. It may not look like it on YouTube. <laughs> no. Yeah, never on YouTube. <laughs> Would you move? I'm trying to work here. Give me a job. We about to not have one. <laughs> Go mix the hardener in there. Soak it. Yeah. This time. Like, don't go easy. Don't be conservative. That's what she said. So we got the fiberglassing all knocked out on this. Now we have to let it dry. And once that is done, we're gonna flip the frame over and work on the underside. That's gonna be like the holding tanks, the belly pan, all that good stuff. So we're just gonna take a break and get right back at it. We're gonna take a brief break from the episode to talk to you guys about an amazing resource that we have been working really hard on. Airstream U, which is an online course for Airstream innovation. So if you are working on an Airstream and you feel stuck or you feel like you need more help, uh, you need to check out Airstream U. We have several courses up and we're working on a ton. That's actually what we're in the middle of doing right now is shooting the Into Your Skin course. That will be coming out this week. Be sure to sign up. We have a special promotion going on right now and that is going to be open for enrollments until May 3rd. So be sure that you get enrolled because we're also limiting it to 300 people. The link is below, check that out, and let's get back to it. This is like our fourth floor that we fiberglass, I think. Uh, yeah, at least probably. I think like four, three, four, five, but uh, this one's definitely like the smoothest. I think this new process is way better and improving, so. Quick. Um, yes. It was quicker until we got to the back and we had to like piece it together, but you know. <laughs> so, okay, well we're gonna flip it over now. So if you wanna get the front, and I'll get the back. Watch that back corner. We need to get that other clamp on. I, yeah, just keep an eye on it. I'm gonna go this way so that it doesn't do that. Did it slide out over there? Yeah, we need that clamp. Oh, okay. Are we 
Are we okay still? Love it when that happens. This thing's gonna break. But well, we're definitely not gonna get the shell on today. Yep. Oh my god. We were already planning some repairs and stuff, but this obviously has accelerated things. That escalated quickly. Uh, it's always frustrating when we have something like that happen. You know, it was just a easily avoidable problem. Uh, luckily, you know, the frame and everything was secure. We're sure that there's safeguards in place for, you know, stuff that may come loose or happen like that, but obviously. It uh, tore up the rotisserie a little bit there. We were already planning on doing some changes to it to make it more stable. One of the problems that we have is that the, the supports tend to kind of flex down and there's a lot of tension on it. So obviously as you saw, when it came loose, it broke those boards. So we're gonna have to replace those. But um, you know, luckily everything's all good. Frame's fine, nobody got hurt. Um, you know, like I said, we try to be safe and make sure there's safeguards, but just always <laughs> annoying when we have stuff like that happen. But now we're going to work on getting the, the plumbing stuff sorted out from there. We're going to work on like the belly pan and, and just really getting the bottom buttoned up. We're getting a lot better at just making sure that we have everything placed properly, all the LP lines through, all the wiring done on the underside and all that. So we're just going to get rocking and rolling on all that. Here we're, we got this open spot. We're gonna belly pan on the top. And what I'm thinking, honestly, is we'll probably need to put like a strip of aluminum right along here where the ramp, you know, won't interfere with it. And then we we'll probably just use like the like cut out sections of the pink foam and put them up underneath there, and then put the aluminum over the top. And then we'll use rock wool uh, everywhere else be better insulation right here where it's thinner because we only have two inches there and we have you know five inches out here so. and then the aluminum like these what are these two the ramp slides yeah well we're not going to put it um on the this. ramp slide we're just putting it in yeah here. it'll be in the middle so it'll we'll rivet it into okay because that just needs to be closed in otherwise it's you know you could have critters or not really water but mainly just like bugs and stuff getting in there so we'll put that piece there So I'm working on getting the holding tanks figured out. Obviously, since this has a ramp in the middle, we're having to be a little bit creative. And so our black tank is actually sitting right over here and it's gonna be a mid bath. So uh, that is to the side of the ramp. It's, it's relatively small, but this is gonna be uh, one guy who's using the trailer. So I'm not really concerned about having a ton of capacity. And a lot of times he's gonna be at a racetrack and so there'll be hookups and all that stuff. So then so we got our gray tank here and we're gonna again have to get kind of creative with the plumbing we're gonna have the the shower basically come through down here up in and then we're also gonna have the drain coming out for the tank and it's gonna run along and then our valves are gonna be further down here so we're getting that stuff laid out and figuring out exactly how we're gonna do it all and then uh, we also have our fresh tank here we just cut the hole for everything for that. We already have the pan built as we showed you guys and then we're gonna get that stuff in there. Continue working on the insulation.
belly pan is going to be kind of tricky. We're going to have to like not rivet in here. That's why we built all of these angled uh, pieces here so that we can just like break it and rivet along here and here and have the overlap and then go over the top. But even so, this is going to be a, quite the puzzle, I think. But it'll look really cool once it's done, I think. So that is what matters. I'm thinking, I guess, is we make like a cover for this, but I don't I feel like this. It yeah, I mean, I wanted to have it be where this whole thing was dropped down, this whole section. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, this belly pan is definitely the most uh, intricate and detailed one that we've had to do. You know, obviously there's so much stuff under there. We got the ramp, we got the, you know, really crazy tank set up and all that. So, taking a lot of work, we're having to do a lot of problem solving. So I think it's turning out really good and this is gonna definitely be an incredibly unique Airstream. bottom side buttoned up. Today it is pretty cold and windy. We had some storms roll through, but luckily we were able to keep it nice and dry with the tarp. And we're getting the tanks installed and then the belly pan. And this is all coming together really well. I love how uh, this back section is starting to look. Can't wait to see it all finished. This thing is going to be like a masterpiece. All right guys, we got the bottom side all wrapped up on this project and it is amazing. I'm really happy with how all of this turned out. I really think this is one of our next level projects. Uh, the level of fabrication that the team put together is just second to none. So we're about to flip it over and we're gonna get the C-channel on it and then we are gonna get the shell on today.
Now that we're done, I will say it. <laughs> that one went really well. Huge accomplishment today. We got the shell on the frame and everything has fitted well. We got the rear cutouts because we needed to, to trim it basically because we left a little bit of floor on the back there so that that would accommodate the, the ramp and all of that to where it would all meet up well once we build the door. Really happy with our progress and this project is really coming together. I can't wait to move on to the next thing which is gonna be building that rear hatch. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also follow us on Instagram. Uh, check out our website. We're updating some stuff there and we got some great products for sale and we will see you next time.